This is car drive night in Clondrahal, and we have just opened the doors for yet another car drive. And this has been going on since Father Finn's time, way back 12 years ago. Father Finn arrived as we were about to build this hall, and his contribution during that time was immense. He was mainly responsible, and his motivation for con completing it in less than 12 months under terrible pressure. And during that time, we had a lot of voluntary labor and so on, all motivated by Father Finn. Now, Father Finn all, was also instrumental in many other projects in this parish, which we'll hear about in time. Well, now, we're getting ready for the car drive. And it started off in Father Finn's time at a very low key, probably with about 12 tables. And it grew gradually with, with Father Finn's help. He, he, he was in C over the car drive for years and encouraged crowds from all corners of the country. So much so that the car drive grew gradually and now we can boast of being the best car drive almost in Munster today. We have an unbroken period over 12 years. And I might say this much, we had a very few lean times during the building of the hall, especially with the ba local bank manager. At one time, we were 17,000 pounds in debt and only for Father Finn's intervening with the bank manager, as he was called in several times, we probably would never have the hall finished. We have had to sell it or so on. But having said all that, we now have this, the start of a complete community complex. The hall was number one. From that, we did the local schoolyard. And from that, moved into a community field, which the ground, we'll talk about it later, which the ground was donated by Father Finn, and he did all the legal end of it. Well, now we'll talk about it later. Now, there are one or two other people here that would like to make a contribution to Father Finn. And Father Finn, by the way, a very happy Golden Jubilee to you from me. A very close friend. Father Finn, there are one or two other people here that would like to make a contribution to you as well. Peg O'Connor now, who was secretary for, under your term, Father, for many years. And I must add, a very good secretary. I was secretary now of the Hall Committee while Father Finn was chairman. And he was indeed a very easy person to work with. Anything reasonable that was to be done, it was never any problem to him. He was most cooperative and always in very good humor. We were, we were a very happy committee always. And we, uh, we think that Father Finn was a wonderful chairman. So chairman, yeah. And as such, he was a very easy person to work for. Anything within reason at all that we asked him to do, he did it without any problem. And he was always in a happy mood and kept us happy too in bad times. Not happy for you. I would now like to wish you a very happy Golden Jubilee and many more years of good health and in your priestly duties. Now we have another man here, Jerry Conley, who would like to say what to Father Finn. Jerry Conley. Hello, Father. Congratulations on your Golden Jubilee. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to thank you very much. To thank you for all you did for the people of Clondrahud. When you came to this parish about 12 years ago, you set the ball rolling. And due to your hard work, your guidance, and above all, your light-hearted and easy approach to all problems. We have today a beautiful community hall, a thriving community hall. Thank you very much indeed, Father. God bless, and I wish you every happiness in years to come. Ni veg de lehead aonarish. Thank you, Father. Now we move along, please. Almost said, and our prize money tonight is 1500 pounds total prize money. Now, first prize 500, second prize 250, and ladies and gentlemen, mix 100 each. Now, best under the line 100, 
and we've drawn the last two games 40 pounds each now we have 120 pounds in spot prizes and the usual raffle with 150 in prize money now i think that's it and anybody who'd like to say a few words now can come along and be on today's tonight if they like that's only a joke now i think we're all set off we go enjoy the car game now <laughs> This is our, here at my back, this is our, um, our community field. Once parish property and a piece of bogland, good for nothing. Well, now, at, at that time, in Fort of Hinsia, early years in Clondrad, the GA tried unsuccessfully to get a piece of ground suitable for a local football field. And it, it dragged on for years and never happens, but somebody got a brainwave that this piece of bogland here was flat enough if there was enough work put into it and so on to develop it. But Father Finn got wind of it and straight away decided to give us the bit of land. And it all started from there. One could never believe from a piece of bog land that we finished up with a football field like this. And now here on my right, James O'Leary was assistant secretary all during the, the construction of the field and dressing room and so on. So James will fill you in on a few things that happened during that time. Thank you, Ted. Well, my first encounter with Father Finn was on Monday, the 19th of September, 1977. It was his first day in the parish, and my father had died the previous Sunday, and my farmer house was the first place in which he participated of any refreshments in this parish. And he struck me as a man of vision, being a man of high size, he also was a man of great vision and my next encounter with him was the last Sunday in October of 1978 when we won the Midcock B Football Championship for the first time and his words to us when we were out in the field that day were well now lads I've done the praying let you do the playing we must have done some bit of playing anyway because we won the championship by a few points and in those years training was done in the small school field at the back of the school. It would measure approximately about 70 yards by 30 yards wide. The following years we travelled to Balivourney to Colossi Isagon grounds to do our training. And in the meantime, some people as Ted had said had been spoken by Father Finn and he said that he had this bit of flat ground which might be suitable for a pitch. Well Ted has described it as a bog land, worse than that, there was no soakage underneath it, but on top of it there was a quarry of stones. It must have been some sort of a glacial debris left there since the Ice Age. And our first function was to make an entrance to it. Father Finn gave the trustees a strip of ground through his front garden up onto this playing field. And Pat Connors, Ted Keller was driving a high mech, uh, myself and one of the Buckley lads, Doug, an entrance in one day and drew it into this ground here in the spring of 1983. Uh, John Manny had dug the preliminary drains in that spring and during the summer of 83 a wall was built to complete the entrance 
and the cross trains were built on the pitch. In the autumn of 83, uh, all the boulders were dug but not taken from the field. That was done during 1984. Uh, towards the end of 84, a lot of topsoil was drawn in from various places around and it was the field was seeded on the 15th of August 1984. During 85, it was fenced and goal posts were erected in 1986. This is 1991, Friday the 31st of May, and this evening about two or three thousand people who gather here in Clondra to witness the replay of the Cork County Championship between UCC and Duhalla. And it is extraordinary that so many people would gather in this bit of ground to watch this game, but they wouldn't do so except for the vision of one man, Father John Finn. And to him we say, Gurumila Mahagat. And now, Father, on the occasion of your Golden Jubilee, we would like to wish you every happiness and to wish you the best for the next 50 years. Gurumila Mahagat. One of the three trustees of the pitch is Mr. Paddy Cockery, who's also known as Mr. G in Clondra. Paddy, what were your dealings with Father Finn? Well, from the start since he came to the parish in 1977, he was really interested in sport and took a keen interest in everything that was happening in the parish, particularly the GA side of it. Um, before he came, we had no GA pitch in the parish, and um, a few of us decided, myself and Ted Healy and Joe Keller, decided to approach him with the view to getting um, part of his grounds and develop it as a pitch. And um, we had a long meeting with him one night, and he was more than cooperative with us. And um, he gave us every help he could get. He handed over the grounds to us and gave us every help, financial and otherwise, um, in developing the grounds. And um, during the development of the pitch, he was instrumental in starting what was the lifeline to the field committee at the time was a £100 loan scheme, in which we raised about £10,000. And he was the man that really started it. And he threw in two or three units himself to start it off. I think he nearly gave us £500 to start off the pitch. So I was really the, 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 the brains behind um, the financial side of the pitch from, view, from that view anyway. Um, as well as that, while we were developing the pitch, he was always with us. He always came over and gave us a helping hand and any advice that he could give us. He took a keen interest in all the teams that played, the underage, the adults and the whole lot. Um, it, it was sad for us that he was gone from the, the parish before uh, the pitch really uh, came to fruition and he would love to be here this evening where we have Duhal and um, UCC replaying this glamour uh, club, senior club championship game. Um, we very much regret his passing from the parish um, but he's always near to our hearts and he's welcome back to Clondra at any time at all to us because he really is uh, one of our first citizens all the time. So this is another man here, John Kelly, a man that was very active during the construction and the work on the field. Now John is a very enthusiastic GEA man and is always around to help young fellas games and all that kind of stuff. So John, what would you like to say to Father Finn? Hello Father, just to wish you a very happy golden jubilee and wish you a lot of good health for many years to come.
This is John Kelleher, PRO man for our local pantomime, pantomime group. John, what would you like to say about the pantomime, if you like? Well, I think it's been a tremendous success down through the years, basically, due to the dedication of um, our producers and the talent that we had available. Um, I also think that Father Finn's involvement from the outset was exceptionally good. Um, he had a great attitude towards it and was the star performer on numerous occasions. Um, I think the pantomime has helped to create a great spirit in the parish, especially at Christmas time, and I think it's inevitable from here on in that we will have a pantomime every year at Christmas because it's regarded as part of the festive season. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity, seeing that it's Father Finn's Golden Jubilee, on behalf of the pantomime committee and all the members of the pantomime done through the years, to congratulate your father and wish you the next 50 of equal happiness. Thank you, Father. Very nice. Now, here's another man here, Michael Creed, that was Involved in every thing from the very start. Michael, what would you like to say to Father Finn? Well, first of all, I'd like to wish Father Finn a uh, very sincere congratulations on his golden jubilee of his ordination to the priesthood. We've ever had a lot of priests here in Clandrod, but I think Father Finn's memory will live forever here. He was really one of our own. Uh, he was involved in every organization in the parish and what he done for the parish is a monument to him particularly the playing field the hall the everything that was involved in the parish father finn was involved in it he had a great co-pilot when he was here uh, in father Halley, and we had many a good laugh and many a happy hour at wedding party pantomime pantomime social you name it and on behalf of the organizations I was involved with while Father Finn was in the parish, I would like to say that we are deeply and deeply indebted for the work he done for us and indeed for the whole community of Clandrod. Good evening, Father, and welcome to Stuick. We're standing here in front of your, one of your former residences, the Curate's House. Um, I'm sure uh, you recognize it, and you recognize the um, footpath from the um, house to the church. I'm sure you recognize the uh, footpath where you went to travel to Mass every morning. It's like school through the fields. It was um, Mass through the graveyard. And on the left, you see the uh, stable, where you stabled your horses, and uh, overhead, the loft for the oats. Nowadays, that is a very beautiful uh, meditation chapel.
I'm sure you recognise this house here, Neil, a very dear friend of yours, and we're now going to have a word with Neil. Now, Neil, we've come to ask you to say a few words to Father Finn on the occasion of his Golden Jubilee. We know, we know you should be with him today, but um, you can't. So just say a few words to him. I wish him the very best of luck for his, for his Golden Jubilee. And I only wish I could be there. Very good. Now, Neil, could you tell us just a few things that you remember about him when he came to Dunamore first? He was tall and handsome. We know that. We don't know about the dark because uh, I, oh. I'm a bit too young now to remember that. Oh, he was. He was really a fine, fine looking priest. And he was young, of course, when he came to Dunamore. But I think he faded a bit when he <laughs> came here. Right. No, he was very good with the plays and that. Do you remember oh, those? He was, he was. And he had uh, a lot of talent in the parish. Right. You know, he had a few very good concerts. Yeah. And he... They were, well, they're all dead now. Right. They're, most of them were dead. Yeah. I'm the only surviving, surviving member now. Very good. Yeah. Right. That's no. a pity I found the effort. <laughs> right. Well, go on. Can you remember the first day he came then? I can, well. He was always above the house, right. and he was old enough to see a there. Well, he'd laugh at that, too, told him. Right. And uh, Dr. Mercy Nitty was there, yeah. and he said, when the name of God was see how we put up with him. Right. And he'd tell you that today. He would. He would. Right. Uh, oh, he was. He was a fine looking man, that day. Yeah. Three, three and a half years he was here. Right. Yeah. Well, I, w I worked under him in the church for a year and a half. And I found him very, very, very good, very nice, right. very easy to, to deal with. Very, very good. So I know. Right. That's enough. I have another little bit. No, I'm sure you have a few little stories to tell. I no, I know. I, uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> Anything at all, no, you can tell us. I can. Anything at all. No. Uh, you can. What story do you think I can have? I don't know. No, maybe funny little things that happen. A uh, few little things like that. You will be with us now, let's know then. But I have three, what could I tell? Right. The concerts went well anyway. Oh, they, they did, they Very did, good. and we yeah. enjoyed them. He was a great musician, he was great in music, you know. Is that right? Oh, he was. Yes. He could all play music half day, mm -hmm. every kind of music. And a singer, I suppose? Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, he can do that, yes. Yes, he can. Oh. Does he to sing any little song for you when he comes? I don't. I don't see him at all. Ah, come on, O'Neill. You do see I, him. I, I do. I've seen him now for a long time. Right. Any more now? So he'll have to come to see you, so if he's being marked absent, will he? We'll get no more information now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you're a rogue, isn't she, Jackie? Jackie, you're the word. Did he come? <laughs> well, no. What more is it? Could I answer any other question you put to me? No, well, I, I want you to tell me now, Ned, because I don't remember him at all, you see. Oh, what can I tell Grand you? That's it? Grand? What can I tell you? That he was three and a half years here. He was. Everyone was mad about him. Oh, they were. Right. He, well, he, he lived with us nearly for while he was here, really. Yes, right. You know, he did. He was yes. Father Dan Casey in himself. Who right. Father Dan? Father Dan, yes, yeah. Indeed, yeah. And uh, we yes. were very friends, and he held the friendship the whole time. Very good. Everywhere he went. Very good. And he came back again. Right, and he had a horse, didn't he, while he was here? Oh, I didn't know about the horse. Is that right? They, yeah. built, they put up a fence above on the top of the field, you yeah. know. And Father uh, Father Massey, uh, Don, uh, Donovan, he was to be a, an uncle of uh, Father Billy's. He was a parish curate over in Abola. Is that right? Yeah. yeah and he, uh, the two of them, well, they had a horse each. Right. And they'd be inside in the bridge for a lot oftener than they'd be in the horse. <laughs> they <laughs> they <don't laughs> The right. heart was on the, on the uh, fake. Right. But, uh, what we, uh, on the sick God, no, we did laugh and no. Oh, right. that's no word of a light, lad. Listen, can't they buckle it? Dan Golden, me. Right. 
Och jag har inte sällt nu än nu, en av mina sällt. Jag tror inte att det här är för nu som du nu har. Det är det. Det faller inte till mig nu sen och 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 and he had a, that's a good table, was it beside the house above? Yeah, it was. Right. That, that was it. Yeah. yeah, I know what the father had done, was take away his own. And I think that, I, I don't believe they left the house of their child. Right. They, they, in the evening, they come over from Adolik. I imagine that they, I imagine that they never the house of their child. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Nice, but, yeah. Well, they had no more business with houses. Right. No more than myself. Right. <laughs> and I thought Dan Golden used to show them then. And Dan Golden was that poor Dan, was that right. too. I said, can they book Right, yeah. And it, and they were great friends, you see. Sure, they were, of course. Yeah, they were all together. They were all together, yes. That's right, yeah. So, that's I, I need more now. That's you, it now. Do you want to get any more? You will get no more. <laughs> Well, no, you're very good. And he'll be delighted now together now to have... He will. That's what you think. Oh, he will. I tell you, I, I give it to you when I left him. <laughs> you, right. you are really mean, I'll be seeing your thing. Well, thanks a million anyway, yeah, then. Uh, thank you, very you much. too. I'm and delighted, really. Very good. I am, I'm delighted. Good. And we'll be seeing you. Yes, and God All right. Yes. Thanks, Nip. Bye-bye. Bye. I could well imagine, yeah. yeah. And there were no celebrations on that day, were there, Nell, when they were going away? No, sure, no. no, no they just went and... Too different to know. Yeah, yeah. And did he still have the house when he got away from here? Yeah, he didn't. No. <laughs> he changed over to the car, didn't he? He, he, he changed to the car. Right. The horse, you know, and the horse. A big, lanky horse. What a hope he had over the horse. <laughs> right. Oh, right. dear. Right. The car was a safer proposition, I suppose. It was. It was. It was great. It was great. It was great. It was great. It was of course, yeah. Mm. Mm. And how about the nearly meant to? Is that right? Yeah, he was guest. Right. Really. Come on. What you hear the two then sing? Right. Both of them. Oh, they were both good singers. Oh, beautiful. Right. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. 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 And I was there a choir in the church while he was here? Or did he have a choir? Did he? Ch I suppose he did. I think. God knows, I don't. Couldn't tell you that now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he had. Should have lots of choir there as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was in China, Mrs. Casey's time, was it? Oh, in China, Mrs. Casey's time. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so, so no. That's it. How do you get more? <laughs> <laughs> you, get no more. you were very good. Yeah. You were very good. Thank you were. You were. I will see you again during the week. All right, Nell? God bless. Now, Father, I have here for you Nora and Sean Foley. I'm sure you recognize them. And Jackie O'Shea. And Nora and Jackie and Sean are now going to reminisce somewhat on the days of Professor Tim, etc. Now, Nora. Well, first, I'd like to congratulate you, Father Finn, on the golden jubilee of your ordination. And we have some very happy memories of your time in Dunbar, naturally. Especially when you started the Dramatic Society and produced Father P Professor Tim. Uh, of course, you remember all the old crowd, Mikey Nagel especially, and Mikey Sullivan, Elsie Herity, of course, and all the rest of the gang. We had some great times at rehearsals in the hall. We had many a good laugh. Now, Jackie, I'm sure you could come in on that and add a few words to what Nora has to say. Father, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you too on your golden jubilee. Yes, we had many happy days. Uh, John wasn't in that play, but Nora, That's right. Mrs. Skelly, That's right. right, and of course we always, we always remember Mikey Nagel, not to mention him, when you stopped him with, uh, with pillows to make him big, and after putting him in there before he went to the stage, you punched him all around the place. Uh, we travelled all over the country to Kilcorny, Bantier, Blarney and Whitechurch. The men went in the back of the lorries, and you brought the women in the car. Then. I think I'll always remember about you. We had a very good hurling team in 40 years. But unfortunately, we were beaten in the semi final. And not to leave things go dull, you decided to have a match between the upper and north sides of the parish. 
and just don't want the gods, you can get us all killed. The fellows weren't talking for 12 months after it. <laughs> then uh, another thing, I remember your horse, during the snow in 47, you gave him the kind of rope to deliver the post around Barakaring and all the mountain areas. I'll hand you back now to John. Now John, John has a few words to say to you. Um, I would like to congratulate you too, Father, on the jubilee of your ordination. Uh, I have a whole lot to say because uh, I wasn't involved with the, uh, the play at the time, and uh, but I do remember you very well when you were here. Uh, your way of giving us a good time and enjoyment uh, was very pleasant. So. Beyond that, I can say that I can look back in memory at the time that you were here and again congratulate you on your long stay to the priest. Thank you, Sean. Now, one little thing Jackie forgot to mention there, I'm sure, when he was talking about taking the women in the car. He forgot some little incident that happened when Father was going over the mountain with a car full of women. Oh, yes. Well, I tell you, no, I tell that better. You were in the car than it had happened. Okay. Well, I remember, do you remember, Father, when we, were going out, when we were coming along the low road on from Ned and you decided you should take non wise out to our own home, so we decided to cross up the bog road anyway, and we were going along grand, and the next thing, no one reminded you, no, watch out there now, Father, there's a slow there, watch that. You had a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I remember, Ned the paint a lot in missing him. You brought him onto the stage too. And uh, with his recitations, and then when you came back with a play from Castle Martyr, you got him to recite that night as well. And you were very good to him, as poor Ned was very popular in, in, in Dunamore. Now, we have another man just after arriving, so I'll hand you over to Billy to have words him, Sean O'Connor. Well, no, Sean O'Connor hasn't too much to say, but we remember you well, Father, and all the, the sport we had, and the plays that you produced. We'll never forget Mike in England, Professor Tim. And he packed the hall that night, was overpacked with people. And uh, I think it was the largest, largest uh, crowd that ever went into the hall that night. Good luck to your father in your golden, ju in your golden jubilee. God bless. No. Now, Jackie, are there any more little incidences we have to talk about before we finish up. Nora? There is one other right you know, Johnny Sweeney was a great dancer at the time and I remember when one night he was coming home in the car with us so you persuaded him to dance a jig out on the road when he got out of the car out at his own home he danced a jig in front of the lights of the car. You remember that surely I think father. Thank you very much indeed Nora. Now um, I'm sure father remembers the hall here all right it has changed somewhat since 1947. Um, it is now a community centre, but I'm sure the father and many people like him have great memories of the old hall. Joe Daly's hall, in fact, it was known as. No, yeah. I don't think of anything. Yes, of course, if Mikey Nagel was alive, no, no, he'd love it. They're yeah. all dead, actually. Because Mikey Nagel might have been. He'd have been the outstanding. Yeah. Three yeah. men that were dead. No, what did. He actually said to me there a few years ago, you know, before mm. Mikey died, he should come to see Mikey. We but I don't think yes. he ever did. And yeah. he came for the few other lady yeah. of the sermon at the mass. Did he? he did. Right. And yeah, I yeah. was saying Mikey was delighted Should've at asked. that. And Mikey could see it yeah, happening and he was so proud of it. Of course, no question about it. At the moment we are standing at the site of the old school and in the distance underneath the tree there you can see the site of the old watch house. As we pass through the churchyard I would just like to um,
say that we in this parish also had the pleasure of having another Mitchellstown man, Father Michael Condon, who did marvellous things for our parish. He was instrumental in um, negotiating for the uh, community field, which we now have, and the community centre. 